Welcome. We're proud to announce the first substantive update to the extrudalizer, the version 1.1.0. This update introduces such exciting features as artwork side mapping and raster asset mapping made Lottie compatible, as well as many smaller performance gains, features, and quality of life improvements. When opening extrudalizer for the first time, you will notice the redesigned interface on the first tab. Let's continue and go over the most important development, the new and improved artwork mapping functionality. We'll begin by using a cube preset to get us started. Now let's go back and click on the artwork mapping button. We are presented with a new dialog. There are three options and if you will move your mouse over each one, it will provide an explanation as well as the pros and cons of using each approach inside the tooltip. Let's start with corner pin mapping. It uses a precomposition for each mapped face and corner pins to attach it to the face. The pros of this approach is that it is less resource intensive and you can use scale for front and back faces and that will work with the mapped side faces. However, it is not Lottie compatible. So as you can see, you are now presented with a list of sides that you can map artwork to. And for your convenience, we highlight the face selected in the dialog. You can select one or you can select all of them. Let's select all and create the needed artwork mapping precompositions. Initially, when the artwork precompositions are created, the mapping is turned off. To enable the mapping, we need to enable it in the layer effects control panel. Now let's enable the mapping effect on all of the artwork layers. Let's open all the precompositions and add some text and color to each side so we can see how it looks on the extrudalized shape. Let's add some rotation on Z axis and Y axis to see it in action. As you can see, if we use the front and scale, the map sides are distorted accordingly. Now let's do the same using the second option, the transform effect. This uses the same approach. It creates precompositions for each mapped face. And this is Lottie compatible using body move in layer version 512 and up. This adds a transform effect to each precomposition instead of corner pins. Let's see how it works. We will again select all the faces and create artwork mapped layers. They're created automatically mapped. So let's go inside each of them and add some text. Again, let's add some rotation to it and let's see it in action. And here you see one of the downsides of using the transform effect. One of the limitations of After Effects is that the transform effect that is applied is limited to the skew of 70%. What that means is that we cannot sufficiently distort the map shape to accommodate such acute angles which are beyond 70 degrees. However, when exported to Lottie, this limitation does not carry over. In the browser, this will not happen. It is advised that if you're planning to use the transform effect for the sides or the front, just apply it prior to exporting to Lottie and while working in After Effects, use the corner pin effect. Now let's look at the last option for artwork mapping. Here, we'll, instead of using precompositions, we will create shape layers and we will use the transform of the shape group to effectuate artwork mapping, but this is limited to the same to the front or the back of the shape only. One of the benefits of using this method of artwork mapping is that it is compatible with earlier Lottie players. However, you're limited to mapping only front and back, and you are forced to use only vector assets that all have to be contained inside one shape layer. So let's see how that works. Let's map front and back, click proceed, 
and here we have two layers front and back now let's add text front and back to it let's convert those text layers to shapes let's group those into one group let's start with the front and we'll copy this group go into the front artwork layer and paste it inside the artwork wrapper and let's do the same for the back we can remove the original text layers now we can position it inside right like this and we want to untype that and here we also have to enable those right here let's add some rotation to see it in action while this approach also uses transform this transform is not limited to the 70 degrees so you do not get the same kind of distortion as you do with transform effect used in the second artwork mapping method now let's go over some of the additional new features and quality of life improvements of Extrudalizer 1.1.0. For example, if we look at this cube, we've mapped all the artwork using corner pins and we want to export it to Lottie. So we need to convert it all to transform effects. So we can select all the artwork layers and we can use one of these two buttons. Here we convert to transform effect. We click here and all artwork layers are converted to use the transform effect. And now we can export to Lottie. Or for example, we want to go back to using corner pins. We click corner pins and it's transformed back into corner pins. So it's just as easy like that to move from corner pins and back to the transform effect. Now let's go over some additional functionality. Let's add a new precomposition and create a rectangle with rounded corners. Let's convert the path to BCA path and extrudalize. Let's say first, let's try Lambert. As you can see, the shader is applied in a much more accurate and realistic way. As you can notice, there are some gaps in between the polygons and what we went ahead and added is a Lambert stroke. So if you increase this stroke by one or two pixels, it will create strokes and will hide all the gaps and the strokes will also follow the same Lambert shading as the sides themselves. So as you can see, this looks very nice and accurate. The same kind of feature is available now for uh, gradient strokes and gradient shader. So let's convert this shape to a gradient shader. As you can see, this also has the same problem with uh, gaps between faces. If we increase the stroke, you will see that there now will be gone. And each stroke has a gradient shader applied to it. One word of caution, both the Lambert shader for the strokes and the gradient shader for the strokes uses quite a few expressions. And uh, if you don't really need it, you can remove it. And you can do so by pressing this button. If you click it, it will remove gradient strokes. But if you will hold shift, it will remove Lambert strokes and will replace them with standard unshaded strokes. One of the other new features is the ability to create simplified wireframes. Sometimes I would want to have a wireframe, but I would not want to have every facet of the Bezier segment highlighted. So the traditional wireframe would look like this, where every segment is highlighted. However, we've added the option of the simplified wireframe. Here it is. And what it does, it will ignore the segmentation right here and create an outline without using this. Here is in red, we can disable the stroke here. And we can control the thickness and the color and the opacity of this new wireframe right here. In this new release, we have substantially optimized the render times for browser playback. After rigorous testing, 
we found that there is an average of a 40% improvement in browser render times. What this essentially means is faster, more efficient animations, so you can spend less time waiting and more time creating. Let's get into the details of our testing process. We've selected a complex object and done its shape with high polygon count. We set 10 segments per Bezier curve, resulting in 82 total faces to truly push the extrudalizer and evaluate its performance. We performed our tests at Chrome, ensuring that our improvements would benefit a broad swath of the users. Tests were run on a variety of platforms, both Windows and Mac systems, and on different types of hardware, including laptops and desktops, resulting in a comprehensive evaluation. The results were consistently impressive. The new version of Extrudalizer delivered a significant performance boost. As you can see from this graph, the average results indicate a clear trend. The new version provides faster render times with an average improvement of 40%. This increased efficiency means that your animations will not only play back smoother, but will also load much faster. A significant factor in this improvement is our close collaboration with the developer of the Body Move-In plugin. By fine-tuning our performance in tandem with their system, we managed to maximize the efficiency of Extrudalizer, leading to this considerable improvement in performance. We're very proud of this enhancement and we're confident that it will make a noticeable difference in your workflow and the overall performance of your animation. We we'll look forward to hearing your feedback and seeing the amazing creations you bring to life with this new, more powerful version of Extrudalizer.